Hello, welcome to Flower Juice. My name is John McDonald and today I'm going to do a bit of a garden tour. We've had a couple of people basically saying, can we get an update on how it's looking? And I have to say, the garden is really getting there. There's been some things that have been successful, some things that have not been successful. So let's just have a little walk around. I've also taken a little bit of some pictures and some footage and we'll put that together so that you can just uh, enjoy the garden as well. So come on, let's go. Let's go and have a look and see what's different. So as you come in our drive, then basically uh, there's this very great big hedge. The whole house is surrounded by what was very, very overgrown hedging. At the moment it's looking a little bit shabby, but all the little birds have been nesting. So I'm just waiting for them to finish and then I'll give it all a bit of a tidy up. But I took about 15 foot off the top of these hedges and that's let a lot more light into the garden. So on this side, this is actually what I think of as my sunny side. So I've put in a fig we've got one fig we're going to dine out for weeks on that and then this border here i've made into like a, a rockery but it's got su succulents cactuses uh that american agave different things and uh some of these i want to stay out all year but we do get cold winters so i will put protection over it like a tent uh and some of these ones like the little cactus cactuses here I will lift and bring back inside but they're just loving it they're loving being in this uh, nice hot sunny bit and I put a lot of sand and grit into the ground uh, this is an oleander in the middle um, and yeah I think it looks really good so also what I've done is I've put like there's a tomato on the left hand side so that was I had a whole load of spare tomatoes and vegetable things the back of this here was meant to be all beautiful cannas and they didn't survive, so none of them have come up. So what I've actually put in the back there is a nice butternut squash. So that can romp away in that area, get the sun and just give us some butternut squashes. I've also got rhubarb growing in the border. This was where I had my lovely tulips at the start of the year got some nice iris, some uh, chrysanthemums, I've got some peppers and again a few more uh, tomatoes. On this side, oh down the bottom there I've also put in some more tomatoes that were just spare in a bit of a space but we've got a uh, canna, we've got zebra grass, uh, that's the miscanthus that I like to use so I uh, wasn't able to move a huge amount so I've got a clump and it'll just get better and better and a bit of privet and this is just looking down into our drive so we actually live in a centre of town here uh, but you wouldn't know it, it feels very much like the countryside so this is the front garden essentially there's two plum trees, uh, plum trees, pear trees one is for eating and one is really for making alcohol so like schnapps uh, but in Hungary it's called palinka and people can make their own and they make it with anything. They make it with pears and plums, mixed fruit, anything goes basically. But what I've done is I've really added a lot more flowers into the border here. We've got daylilies, little marguerites, uh, yucca that's not very happy, little roses, sedum, lamb's ears, uh, burginia. Uh, these, this plant here is a violet and it's just beautiful when it's covered in flowers and um, what we have on the fence is there's a wisteria and the wisteria goes all the way up into the trees on the next bit of ground and it was just stunning I mean there's no way to prune it but it was just having a great time this year this little arbor here last year we got a lot of grapes and they are basically red and green my friend Carol made this wind chime, uh, which is just amazing. I love it. Thank you, Carol. It's really cool. And uh, this little lemon is basically a lemon that I grew from a pip. Uh, so it's done really well. I must admit, I've stuck a fake lemon on it because because it's been grown from a pip, it's not flowered and it's probably not going to flower. So I'm looking to either graft on pieces that will um, or put some fake ones on and that's a big cheat. Over here I've got a little dwarf banana and when you look down the side of the house we've got our pathway which is quite nice 
And then this part of the garden is more like a kind of Japanese style. And the only reason we've gone with that is we had a Buddha, made a lantern out of some bits of concrete, and this is just quite a nice tranquil bit. There's some nice lilies here, um, sweet William, and again I put in cannas. Now, out of all the cannas, I brought some in, left some out and covered them, left some out and didn't cover them. And these were the ones that were left out and covered and they've survived. And I think because being close to a wall uh, has been a bit drier as well. But these are very tall with a red flower, which I love. Now what I've been doing, we have wood fire here, we've got gas heating, but we've got wood fire, is I strip off the bark and uh, put it through the shredder and use that for basically uh, mulching the ground. But this is so simple, I mean like I could have tried to change all this but because of the hedging um, it's never going to get it's never going to get sunny and it's actually quite nice having a little calm area. I don't really want to lose the hedge because of the road and uh, it does give a little bit of protection. Nice little seating area which is lovely at night and this is the back yard basically so if we'd gone up the side of the house there uh, that's there and then we've got a garage my flower room what was an outdoor store area there that I've turned into a bit of a greenhouse um, a little bit of a sculpture on barrel and different things so let's start here I think so here also is a little bit of a sunny spot um, these containers, enamel containers, were just in some of the storage and they're old food storage jars from way long ago. But I love them. And strawberries. This is an olive tree and these are little citrus. So these are actually little mandarins that I got at Christmas. We've got oleander and we've got prickly pear and this is a little canna down uh, in front of the two blueberries. So, as you can see, this is where we are. This <laughs> is my secret weapon against cats. So far it's working. <laughs> this border here was meant to be full of beautiful cannas. And of course they were the ones that didn't come up. So what I've done is I've used it for a mixture of my house plants. We've got uh, avocado, I've put out some ginger which has started to grow. There's also a pitcher plant sitting at the back and we've got some coleus and clivia and some geranium. So just a bit of a mix to stop it being bare and I think that's worked really well. Now one of the big problems with this garden was these hedges and I ultimately trimmed back and then took out hedge uh, and I was left with all these big stumps. So what I did was I took, left these four on the right hand side and moved four that were beside that down or three to make a bit of an arbor. Uh, and that's really, really worked. And as you can see, there's the bark that I strip off the logs. That one I wanted to leave really chunky, so I didn't put it through the shredder. But if you put it through the shredder, it really uh, shreds up nicely. Uh, you can see that in that other border there. Now this red thing was actually the heat exchanger in our old wooden fire. Um, and we just wanted to make a bit of a feature of it. So it's sitting there as a little bit of a garden ornament. What I'm doing here is I'm growing a little bit of hedging because I want to create some structure in the garden for the winter. Um, so essentially to make some blocks of hedging over here we've got a little pond feature and then we've got our bed with our uh, banana plant. So this is a banana and this one here is a, a taro uh, which my friend gave me. She had it in her house and it just kind of, it got a little bit big. And over here I've got some equisetum which I grew from some material I was using in a design and um, it was okay and now I've put it in the ground and it's really happy now. It's really taking off. What I did with this border, this is meant to be a gunnera but I don't think it is. 
I dug a great big hole, lined it with old plastic bags, put soil in, really enriched it and really it's like a bog garden. So both of these plants should hopefully love that. Over here I've got really my little house plant corner. Um, we're going to be doing up the living room and giving it a paint and getting the windows changed so a lot of these were having to come out anyway just to, so we could get that done. Uh, but I've got some nice bits and bods. Diffenbachia, the really big one at the back here, someone gave me and uh, I've just rooted that in water and been able to stick it in some soil. So a real mixture. Now, this is my, my new lemon tree and this is his brother, the lime tree. Not a lime on it, but the lemon tree has, when I got it, it was covered in flowers and it has got lemons. So this little feature I decided I would build, I didn't want to build a great big pond, um, but the easiest solution to that was just doing it with, there is fish in there, honestly, uh, just buying like a tank, using some bricks and materials that were kicking around and putting it in. So we've got a bit of agapanthus, strelitzia. It's a shame that the winter here gets cold because it would be great if you could leave these out. And then coming over to here, this was the baby or one of the babies of the banana. And when we moved, I, I brought it and put it in a different place. So I'm kind of like trying to cover my bets. So if one doesn't survive, the other one will. But we've got some nice canna, um, laurel. I've put in some cornice because I love the twigs and they're very, very useful. My whole idea with the garden is to have things that I can cut and use and trim and... Um, they're not too fussy and they just hopefully give me some material to use. And then looking over there is really my little, little veg garden. Let's go have a look. We'll have a sneaky look over the fence. I like to reuse things and I like to um, just see what we've got. Well, this is a dahlia and another dahlia. And this whole area here gets full of lily of the valley. But this is my little veg garden, so it's a little bit messy. Um, this was meant to be a line of tomatoes, but some of them didn't take. I think there was something under the ground eating it. Again, I've used bark for mulching the ground. But this is what I love, is my... Uh... Where's that? Oh, there's lots of fluff. Yeah, is uh, this ladder for uh, butternut squash. I saw it on Pinterest and I thought, oh, that looks great. And uh, I had an old ladder, put a couple of supports in the ground, uh, set it up. This fluffy thing that's going past is actually off the willow trees that are at the back. So what I've got here is I've got potatoes, I've got tomatoes, uh, mange too, there's courgettes, butternut squash, we've got beetroot, more potatoes, uh, some parsley, spring onion, carrots, and some little privet cuttings that are hopefully coming on. That's my water storage. And at the back there are sweet corn, which are quite compacted, but I'm really gonna water them and look after them so they should be okay. And again, more spare tomatoes that I can't, I can't throw them out. Uh, I gave loads away and I'd rather just pop them in, pop them in a border and uh, see how they get on. So like here, there's a little courgette. That was a spare courgette. And there's another one. It might be a wee bit shady here, but if I get one courgette off each of them, then um, it's one courgette I, would, I wouldn't have had. So I think that's a good way to look at it. So there's quite a lot going on. This garden was very much just a usable yard before. And now um, I think we've kind of given it a bit more shape and a bit more direction. Um, it's got some things in it that people have given us. It's got some things that I found, like that concrete thing there was just in the yard. Um, this nice little, ooh, sorry, it's a bit sunny. This nice little bird box, a uh, bird feeder is so cute. We got given that when we moved house um, and it just looks really good. 
So I've tried to do it in such a way that you don't see everything at once and if you are looking down a the line there's something to look at at the end and that things are cuttable. But where we are, we're, we've basically got fields on the left hand side and then right next door is like derelict property. You, you see it in the winter but you don't really see it just now so it's all forest and birds and we're so lucky to be in town and to have uh, all this bird song. I hope you can hear it. It's just amazing. And of course, you just make a garden for your own pleasure and to enjoy. So I hope you've enjoyed this garden tour. Uh, the garden has really romped along. I'm sure it's going to get even better. So we'll probably do another little revisit later on at the end of the summer and see what's happening veg wise, butternut squash wise and uh, see what you think. So I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of seeing what there is and hopefully you managed to hear the bird song as well because it was just amazing. So have a great day and we shall see you soon. Bye for now.